Hey guys, how is it bloody hanging? So I've had a question from quite a famous director actually, Ivo Weigard. You've probably heard of him, he works with a lot of the big Hollywood actresses. And at the moment he's actually making his own film, which is called The Inexplicable Tale of the Girl in the Feather Jacket. And it looks really cool, so I can't wait to see that. But anyway, Ivo's question was, using turbo tools, which is what he uses to speed up his, his 3D renders in cycles, how can he reintroduce some noise to have some control over an artistic film grain? And the techniques I'm going to show you in this video, you can also use if you're not using turbo tools. And for those of you that might not be familiar with turbo tools, basically it's an add-on for Blender that has a feature called Turbo Render. And Turbo Render will allow you to render at much lower samples so that you get much faster renders, but still get really high quality results thanks to the advanced denoising system. So to easily demonstrate a few ways you can do this, I'm going to use this interior scene. Uh, I'm going to turn off under the Turbo Tools options, Temporal Stabilization. I don't need that because I'm only going to render a still image. This is just if you want to remove flicker from an animation, so I'll hide that. And we'll also just turn on Turbo Render, so it's already on. Just turn it on, it turns blue. And I'm just going to use a, the sort of high denoising mode, high sample preset, and we'll use options that are, you know, suitable for an interior scene and just tell it which sort of materials are present in the scene as well. And that's it basically. So let's do a render. We'll go across to the compositor and when I render with Turbo Tools enabled, you'll notice that the samples are going to change here. So this is what Turbo Tools will, uh, Turbo Render will do. It will change the samples to a much lower amount because again, it's able to produce a much higher quality even at low samples. So this is where it gets its speed gain. Let's just change this to the render view in the image editor. So I do a render. And now the render started. If we go down to the sample settings, we can see that Turbo Render, based on the quality that we specified, has reduced those samples quite significantly, which it's able to do again, because it can produce a high quality result, even at low samples. So there we go. This scene is finished in one minute, 20 seconds which I'm really happy with because on my old computer, this GTX 1070, this interior scene takes between 20 and 40 minutes to get a similar quality if I'm not using Turbo Tools. And we can see here, we've got nice texture retention on all the materials and you know everything's looking really realistic. Now, just for comparison, for those of you who have not seen Turbo Tools in action before, I'll do a quick render using the same sample settings, but without Turbo Render, and I'll instead use the denoiser from the render panel. So the open image denoiser on the best settings. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off Turbo Render. We'll come up here, press N over the image editor, and I'll save this one as Turbo. And we'll name the second slot to uh, not Turbo. But I want to make sure, so I've turned it off here, and I want to make sure that the samples I use without Turbo Render are the same samples that I used when I was using Turbo Render. So let's choose those from the preset. I need to turn on the denoiser. I render. Right, so that's finished pretty quick. And if we just enlarge this, and we've got the render time of 1 minute 19. And compared to Turbo Render, it was 1 minute 20. But if we zoom in, and we'll look at the difference in quality. So this is with Turbo. If we go without Turbo, you'll notice straight away, we're losing a lot of detail, particularly in the texture. So if we look at this bed, this area here, we're starting to, it's, it's looking very blurry. If we turn, look at the turbo version, you can see we've retained all that nice crisp texture detail. The same on the, uh, if we look at the wood here. So this is without turbo, it's very blurry. We've lost all that detail. With turbo, you can see we've retained it all. Uh, come across maybe something like the light switch here. This is without turbo. You can see it becomes not very realistic, but with Turbo, it's looking much more realistic. And again, for this part of the carpet, you can see we've just lost everything. As soon as it becomes into a, a difficult area to render, where you've got lots of indirect lighting, um, you start losing detail. So we've lost all the carpet detail, basically. And probably the wood detail here has gone as well. Whereas if you look at the Turbo version, We've maintained all of that texture detail. We've even got the detail on this wood 
um, and the plug socket's looking quite crisp. And if we look at the bathroom floor, without a turbo, we've actually lost all of that texture detail where the tiles, you know, the cross parts of the tiles, they've gone. Whereas turbo completely, um, you know, it's, it's kept them. So it's the difference, I would say, between reality and a 3D render is uh, just the additional quality you get and detail retention you get with turbo tool. If I wanted to get the same sort of quality as I've got with turbo tools using the standard denoiser in the render panel, I would usually need to render sort of three to five times longer with much higher samples. But anyway, getting back to the question, because turbo tools will always give you a completely clean result with no noise, uh, Ivo wants to know how can we get some of that noise back in? So let's look at a few ways to reintroduce some noise. It's a little bit different to if you're just using the standard denoiser because the standard denoiser includes a noisy image pass, which we don't get with turbo render. Just to demonstrate how we would do it without turbo render using the standard denoiser, we would basically just mix the two together. So you'd mix the noisy version with the denoised version using a mix node. And you can see we can mix between the two. Now, with when we render with turbo render, we don't get the noisy image pass. So we need to do it in a different way. The first way, we can do it using a texture. So if we go into the texture panel, we'll add a new texture and we'll set it to be a noise texture. So this will give us a different noise pattern on each frame. So it's also suitable for animations as well. I'll just need to re-render to get the high quality Turbo Tools cache back. Right, so the texture we've just created, the noise texture, we can access this in the compositor. So if I just go full screen now, Shift A, I'm going to do Shift A and add a texture. We're going to choose the texture to be the noise texture we've just created. And if we look at this on its own by Control Shift clicking on the color tab here, you can see we've got that noise pattern. And I can mix this in over here and choose the amount and mix it in like so. Now we're probably gonna to want to change this to be darken so that as we increase this, we get more of a natural noise pattern. So where it's white, it's gonna darken the image. So basically where the noise is white, it's gonna darken that image. And we can control that noise just by increasing the factor. So there's the first way. Now, another way you might want to do it is to use the actual noise pattern generated by cycles, because that might more closely emulate the noise you would get with an actual camera, because the noise will be generally in the areas that aren't well lit. So we'll get rid of that noise and we'll uh, just put the darken or the mix node back to mix and we'll mute it as well. And now let's go to the view layer properties and we're going to add a couple of different passes because there's two different ways we can do it. We can use either a indirect diffuse pass, which should have quite a nice amount of noise in areas that aren't directly lit. So that's the first option we could use. The second option is to recreate the noisy pass that we got with the standard open image denoiser, the one we've got here. When we render with turbo render enabled, join the render, it will actually come down here and it will disable the denoiser and that will make it disappear from the available passes. So we need to create our own. By going into the passes section and under light groups, we'll create a new light group and I'll call this my noisy. And you'll see we've now got a new pass here. And basically this is gonna be, if I assign every light in the scene to contribute to this light group, then we're gonna replicate what we got before with that noisy pass from Open Image Denoiser. So let's do that quickly. All we've got to do, we'll go firstly into the world, under settings, and I'll say, I want the HDRI world environment to contribute to my noisy. And I want all of the lights as well that are visible in this scene. So the bathroom lights, we we'll just turn the overlays on and go into the outliner. I'll set one of them and I'll do Shift L and I'll say select all lights that have got the same object data. So now I've selected all those bathroom lights and we can see that if we go over here into the outliner under the lights, you see it's selected all those bathroom lights for us. And all we need to do to get these to contribute to that pass is go into the object settings and we'll go 
And uh, try and remember where it is. Shading, I think. And then light groups. And then we'll click in here and we'll press Alt. So hold the Alt key down and then click on My Noisy. So now all of these lights, we select them one by one. Because we had Alt held down while I clicked the option, it's assigned it to each of those selected lights. And then lastly, we've got a few lights in here which are actually material based lights. So, what we'll need to do with those is assign those objects to that light group as well. So, this object here has got a material. If we look in here, we've got a bulb material, which is what's responsible for lighting up these lights. So, I'm going to go into the object properties for this object down into the light group settings and we'll choose my noisy so now this will contribute to that path as well and then lastly we've got these bedside lamps which have also got a bulb material so I've come in here you see under materials we've got two materials which have got illumination so we can't add materials as far as I'm aware directly to light groups we need to do it on the object so we'll choose this object and we'll choose this object as well. So shift click to choose both of them. So we've got both of them selected. We'll come into the object properties, down to the shading, under light groups. I'll click in this box and I'll alt click my noisy because I've got two objects selected. And now if I select them individually, they're both going to be assigned to that light group. And now if we go back to the compositor, we'll do a render. Let's do it in a different slot. So we'll call this Turbo with Passes. And we'll make sure we've got Turbo Tools enabled. So this will automatically disable the denoiser here and it will override any samples if they're different in here as well. And then we'll do Render, Turbo Tools Render. And now that's finished rendering, we've got those two additional passes on the resulting cache node. Now it's taking a little bit longer this is not because I've enabled those passes. It's actually because I've opened up uh, DaVinci Resolve. So it's, it's just taking a little bit longer because I'm also doing a screen record as well. All right. So what we'll do now is look at how we can use these ones instead of the noise. Firstly, let's have a look at the passes. So the Diffuse Indirect gives us this sort of an effect. And then we've got the Combined Noisy. If we just plug it in over here so we can see what it looks like graded, so it's easier to tell. So this is the combined my noisy pass, and this is the denoised combined pass. And you can see they're identical apart from the noise. So let's put this one in here. And now I'm going to firstly let's go with the diffuse indirect. Plug that into the bottom. We'll unmute this. I don't want to mix it, otherwise we're just going to get a combination of the two. What I want to do is use darken instead. So as we darken it we get a much more realistic camera noise pattern uh, based on where those white areas are in the noise that we've got here. Okay, so there's one way we can do it. Or the second way, we can use this combined noisy pass we've created instead, and we'll get a very slightly different result. And again, we can control it using the factor with the, color, with the mixed color node set to darken. I find gives the best results. But you can play around with the different options you've got in here as well if you want to, uh, but for me, I do prefer dark. And if you have it as mix, then it's going to be, the noise is going to be white. Um, so it's just easier to set it to dark than I find. And there we go. And by the way, if you are going to be using these two methods, this noise is only going to be animated, which is what you're going to be wanting if you've got an animation, if... You go into the render settings. Let's just minimize turbo render. And we'll come under advanced. And you need to turn this little clock icon on here for the seed. This will guarantee that cycles will generate a different noise pattern on each frame. If you don't tick this, so if you don't turn that on, then the noise is going to be static, which will look quite weird, almost as if you've got something over the lens of the camera. And that's it, really. So I hope that's useful. And by the way, I've also got a new course available on Udemy, if you would like to check that out. I'll put a link in the description below, 
And basically it will, you'll make this entire scene, including how to model these creatures from scratch, and then make them completely autonomous, so that they've got a life of their own where they can interact with each other, they'll interact with the water and the surrounding objects, and we'll do all sorts of fun things in that uh, tutorial as well, such as shooting them out of cannons and things like that. And by the way, this is rendered using the EV render engine. So we'll also look at some techniques that you can use to get really nice realistic renders out of EV. So thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next one.